What's up everybody, Lord Dilly here. Been a minute since my last video, that Green Bay loss really did a number on me. I pulled myself together and I did some research on quarterback contracts, how it relates to Super Bowl attendance, and I wanted to discuss how that pertains to Dak Prescott's contract and the current situation he and the Dallas Cowboys find themselves in. So, with that being said, here we go. Hey, this is a test of how great we can be, right? So if you guys want to hear something crazy, I'm going to show you this chart here. I'll highlight the parts because it's kind of sloppily put together. It's equivalent to scribbling some thoughts down on a, a, a napkin at a bar. But um, I found something really interesting. Out of the last nine Super Bowls going back to 2015, how many do you think had quarterbacks on rookie deals? Well, the answer is six. Six out of the nine last Super Bowls featured one quarterback on a rookie deal. So why is that important? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. When your quarterback is on a rookie deal, this affords you the cap space to manage and maneuver free agency. It allows you to pay the guys that you drafted, that you drafted well, and they've turned out to be elite superstars. In Cowboys case, it's uh, CD Lamb and Micah Parsons coming up. Uh, it allows you to pay guys like that and you're able to keep all of your cornerstone players without worrying about well do i keep this guy do i keep that guy do i really want to pay this guy elite talent is he in his prime can i get multiple draft picks for this guy without having to pay him when your quarterback's on a rookie deal you just have so much more ammunition to attack roster building with so why are these gms paying quarterbacks these ridiculous contracts well, it's job security, because if you don't have a good enough quarterback to at least stay competitive with, well, it could cost you your job. Most GMs are afforded a couple of years to build their roster and to turn a team around, make it competitive. And when you have the most important piece on the team figured out, and that's quarterback, you pay him and you pay him whatever the going rate is for a franchise quarterback. That's why you see Kirk Cousins keep getting paid, even though most considered him to be an average to slightly above average quarterback. Well, he's competitive. He keeps the team competitive and they can win with Kirk Cousins, even though people don't really see him as a serious Super Bowl contender. All right, so how does this relate to Dallas? Well, the GM is also the owner. This guy can do whatever he wants with no repercussions. The only thing he has to worry about is blowback from the fan base. And does he really care about that? I don't know. He's the owner of the most successful sports franchise in the world on the globe. And I know he does what he thinks is best for the team. He's not trying to sabotage the team. He's not trying to sabotage Mike McCarthy because if he didn't want McCarthy, fire him. He's not trying to sabotage Dak. The guy loves Dak. And one thing you can say about Jerry is he loves his players probably to a fault. You look at like a case like Randy Gregory, where that guy probably should have been let go for all the issues he had with weed uh, back when he got suspended at the 18th time. But... Jerry stuck by him. It didn't work out. He kind of got screwed by Randy and his agent in the end. But Jerry is a loyal guy. And if he likes you, he'll pay you and keep you around. All right. So where are we at with Dallas? So we know Jerry doesn't have to worry about job security. We know Dak has a massive cap hit this season. And I'll show you the chart here again. This time, look at the percentages of the quarterbacks who made it to the Super Bowl. And keep in mind that as it stands right now, this season... Dak accounts for 24% of the Cowboys' available cap space. Now look at this chart, look at the percentage, look at the cap hit percentage, the, the amount of the cap that these quarterbacks commanded. You'll see the highest number on here is 17%, and that's back-to-back -back years here with Mahomes. You have Brady at about 12%, and you have the outlier Matt Ryan. He had a really good year, and he was a really good quarterback for a hot minute there, but he kind of fell off. Uh, right after he made the Super Bowl. Uh, but look at the rest of these, they're less than 10%. So that tells me that as a stance right now, the Cowboys, they're doomed. With a 24% of the cap going to one position, that is a recipe for disaster. And that's why you're seeing guys leave left and right here in free agency, because Dallas doesn't have the cap space to re-sign these guys. And it's not that these guys are all stars that are leaving, except for maybe Tyron Smith. But they also aren't replacing these guys with any meaningful additions. They've only signed one guy so far this offseason. Okay, so now that we know that 
all-star quarterbacks like Patrick Mahomes, the Unicorns, are commanding about 17% of their team's cap. You've got Brady was commanding about 12% of his team's cap. And then you have a bunch of rookie contracts that are sometimes less than 5% of the team's cap. And you pair that with the knowledge that Dak, as it stands, is commanding 24% of this year's salary cap. What do we do? What do the Cowboys do? If you're arguing that Dak simply can't get the job done and you want to see him leave, well, this year you're screwed. Next year, you're semi-screwed. So that's two years basically with massive cap hits. The next year, the guy is not even on the team and he's still killing your salary cap. Are you willing to let him go and swallow that massive cap hit and then hopefully draft a guy or maybe Trey Lance can step up? Is that what you're hoping for? Or are you in the other camp where, from a financial standpoint alone, you have to extend Dak? You, you really have no choice because financially it doesn't really make sense to take such a large cap hit this year and then next year have such a large cap hit for a guy who's not even here knowing you have these massive contracts with CeeDee Lamb coming up, Micah Parsons. And by the way, you've got Zach Martin coming up. You've got Demarcus Lawrence coming up and several others whose contracts are expiring that you've now got to pay big money to again. So, I mean, what are you supposed to do? And then finally, the last camp that you may be residing is, well, Dak's good enough to win. So you got to pay him whatever the going rate is for a franchise quarterback. And I kind of fall in between camp two and three because I think that you're in a financial pickle where you don't really have a choice but to extend the guy. And really, I think that Dak is competitive. He keeps his team competitive enough to potentially make a run at a Super Bowl if the stars align. And think about some of these all-time great quarterbacks, all right? Just the first few that popped into my head that I wrote down were Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre, Kurt Warner, Steve Young as a starter. All right, these guys all have one Super Bowl ring, okay? That's 64 combined seasons with five rings show for it some of these guys didn't get rings until later on in their careers point being super bowls are hard to come by to get to let alone win right the unicorns like mahomes and Favre don't exist really in reality i mean those are just extremely lucky circumstances where mahomes fell in the draft to kansas city and <laughs> Tom Brady was almost not even drafted, all right? And these guys turned out to be dudes that annually end up in the AFC Championship game or the Super Bowl. And guys like that, historically speaking, just don't exist. So I'm not willing to gamble my team's future on hopefully finding a unicorn. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remain as competitive as possible. And yes, extending Dak, lowering his cap hit, and keeping him around as a guy who can play well. Um, he doesn't always bring his team to the next level when he needs to, so that is a criticism of his that I'm willing to provide all right, and acknowledge. He needs to be better in the playoffs, but so does the rest of the team. And you, you have nine all pros in the team this last season, and who stepped up? The defense was lacking, and you can blame a lot of that on the zone defense they had to play to make up for Gilmore's injury, which I'll get to that in a separate video maybe down the road. Um, but Dak, for the most part, keeps you competitive and all it takes, and you see it, the reason I mentioned these quarterbacks with one ring, they remain competitive throughout their entire careers and they all have one Super Bowl ring to show for it. That's all it takes is one magical run. I really thought this last season was going to be the season for that magical run. A lot of things lined up in Cowboys favor, didn't work out, okay? But they're 12 and five, three seasons in a row. They are super competitive in the NFC. They're up there with the Niners. Um, the Eagles, I don't know what to think about them. I mean, the Cowboys might win the division back-to-back -back years here. The Eagles are, yeah, they're signing a bunch of free agents. I don't trust Hurts to develop into a pro-style quarterback, and you saw him take a step back last year, all right? So I think the Cowboys are going to remain competitive. And again, we'll see what happens. But the only way you remain competitive, in my opinion, is to extend Dak Prescott. So I am on that side of the fence where I do want to see Dak get paid. Uh, I don't want to see him command a quarter of the salary cap or you need to get him 15% or lower, preferably around 12%. I'm not sure how that's going to line up with the increase in the salary cap. Um, but 
Yes, let's extend DAG, lower his cap hit, and remain competitive for as long as possible and not close that window and rebuild. So there you have it. Are you willing to risk this team's future for a rookie quarterback, uh, a young quarterback on a rookie deal? You see the success historically in the last nine years, seven out of the last nine Super Bowls featured a quarterback on a rookie deal. Mahomes did account for two of those. Are you willing to uh, risk the future of this team on a hope and a prayer that you find a guy? Because how many quarterbacks get drafted and don't get to a Super Bowl? There's there's a lot. You know, it's it's still tough to predict who is going to win and who's going to fail in the NFL as far as young quarterbacks go. Are you team let Dak walk next year and maybe Trey Lance can develop? Are you team extend Dak because it makes the most sense for the cap? Or are you team extend Dak because he gives this team the best chance to win? Or are you something else that I haven't even mentioned? Uh, let me know in the comments below, guys. I look forward to hearing from you. I really love the debate. So uh, really challenge me if you disagree with me. Let me know your thoughts. And uh, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Hit like for the algorithm. And uh, with all that being said, catch you later. Hey, this is a touchdown great we can be, right?